Hello ladies. Hi friends. This is truly a message for the for the ladies, for those of you who read the, the subject line. Um, if you're a gent, you're totally welcome to stay on. Actually, this would really help you support your ladies. So I take that back. I take that back. This is a message for everyone. Um, and when I say everyone, I mean those of us in families, those of us who have uh, partners. Let me just... Uh, those of us who have partners, those of us who are a partner, female, male, doesn't matter. Um, many different versions of couplehood and, um, you know, originally I said this was for the ladies, but um, yeah, I think it's a really important message for all of us. So it's actually a very funny story. So, and this goes back to a dinner party that Josh and I had last week at home. Um, it has to do with the dinner party. It has to do with Tina Turner. Believe it or not, Tina Turner. Have you heard that name in forever? I know when I heard it last week, when I heard her name last week, I was like, my gosh, I don't remember the last time I thought about her. I literally put her onto my playlist um, that night because there's just, yeah, it reminds me of growing up. It reminds me of living with my grandmother. So, so the story is about a dinner party. The story that I'm going to tell you is about Tina Turner. And it's also a story... Um, you know, this, this whole live stream, this whole share, this whole video will be um, really geared towards women, women raising children, women raising kids. Again, that's for the gents, it's for the partners, all partners of women um, who might be either stay-at-home moms or entrepreneurs who also, you know, balance the, um, the uh, you know, the job of, of motherhood. And, you know, when I think of women raising children, by the way, I'm at Nolan's soccer practice, so right in front of me, um, Nolan is running, uh, running drills right now in, in soccer or in football, as we say. Um, so yes, this message is for women raising kids, um, and it's about raising kids, kind of, kind of, but not really. Um, and it's really, for those of you um, who might have time to jump on, jump on now, or you might be listening to the replay, definitely um, say hi, by the way, if you're um, coming on live or in the replay. We'd love to know your thoughts on this. Um, it's also really about the message here, the heart and soul of this message is really about us, women who are raising kids, also really raising the awareness, raising the consciousness around how we can do this one thing more. Now, I'm going to get into that one thing in a second, but I want to tell you the story um, or the thing that happened at this dinner party at our house last week. So uh, we're at the dinner party. It's probably two and a half hours in or so. And it was a mixed group. Actually, no, hold on one second. Actually, Josh and I were the only parents at that table, at our table. So it was Josh and I who have a child. And then there were friends of ours who do not have a child, who do not have children. Um, then there was a friend of ours who uh, does not have children either, however, meaning of, of her own. However, she and her husband um, spend a lot of time and take care of uh, their niece every weekend, every Saturday night. Um, in fact, she lived with them for like, I think, two years or so. Um, so they have definitely been nurturing uh, young people. And in fact, the couple that I just spoke about who don't, you know, don't, maybe don't have their own biological children, they have nieces and nephews. And, and they you know, uh, take great pride in loving them up as well. And then to the, let's see, to the right of me, we had another couple who's, who are dating and they also did not have children. However, here's the important thing that came out of this conversation. Again, about two and a half hours in, we were talking about everything. We were talking about everything from, 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 from death to relationships to dancing to, uh, you know, carving time out for ourselves. And um, I think I might have started this part of the conversation where I said to the group, you know, I've been feeling this thing lately. Tell me if you guys have been feeling this as well. And the thing that I have been feeling, and please tell me if you, uh, as a woman or as a man, um, you know, have been feeling this in, in your life, in your awareness, in your body as well. Because it was definitely sort of a, a collective yes at the table. Um, so it doesn't, you know, it wasn't necessarily that you had to have kids to feel this way, but I said, and it really has nothing to do with my kid, but just sort of giving you the, the collective, uh, 
how interesting it was to get the collective yes, even though we were all in such different sort of stages of our relationships, of kids, no kids. And I said, Has, have any of you guys been feeling like you really need to change things up in your life? That, and, and I gave an example. I said, you know, recently for me, and I'm always, for those of you who know me or who don't know me, maybe you've seen a live stream before, maybe you've seen a video before, maybe you've been a client, maybe you're a really good friend, maybe you're my brother or my sister-in-law. Um, you know, a lot of you probably know that I love going on adventures. I love going on trips. I love doing spontaneous things. I love creating experiences. This is who I am. So the following thing that I'm about to share with you was kind of a surprise to me. It was a little bit of like a, so interesting that a person like that can still feel the following way. So I said, have you guys been feeling that you have to change things up? For example, I said last week I just had the aha that I needed to start to do to do different things and to be even more spontaneous and to be even more um, to be even more in love with life and I am in love with life but I mean in love with life so that it is inspiring me to do everything from looking at my week and deciding you know looking at it and going wow I normally do my workouts in this way I mean I could literally rattle it off to you and I'm going to share with you kind of this may seem like a really small thing but it's a huge thing and then I'm going to go into um, back to the the core of the message that I think will really support us all so Mondays I normally do yoga Tuesdays I normally do strength training Wednesdays I dance Thursdays more strength training Friday yoga um, and I said to friends I said I feel like you know, I've been in this sort of routine of this same of these same workouts and I love it meaning I love those workouts I love where I go I love knowing that on Mondays that's my like get into my Zen mode start the week off with you know with yoga awesome but I was like ah it needed to change and so over the last week and a bit I've been changing it up Mondays are now no longer yoga days um, now they are every anything from I'm gonna take an intro to jazz class I'm gonna like you know you know uh, I'll never skip a workout I was gonna say I'll go to the movies I did do that this week which I've never done during the day in forever ago um, and anyway so I just changed up my entire week right as far as workouts go and it is amazing how it turned up the dial on this, you know, um, on this idea of like really expressing how much I love my life. In other words, you know, we, we can really get into this rhythm and rhythms are awesome. I mean, talk, look, think of, you know, how much we love music and why we love music. It's because it's rhythm. It's the rhythm of our soul. And sometimes, yes, our soul needs rhythm. In other words, needs a routine. I call it more of a rhythm. You know, I love my rhythm, but sometimes we got to change that rhythm up. So I've been changing the rhythm up. I said at the dinner party, or I continued and I said, but I feel like there's more. Do you guys feel that way? And literally everyone at the table in their own way, with their own words, with their own stories, their own sort of backup said, no, I've been feeling that way a lot too. Now we're all different ages, everywhere from early 30s, mid 30s to late 50s. You know, I'm in my mid 40s. And so it was really interesting to see that not only couples uh, who didn't have children, you know, were saying this, couples or me as a mom, I was saying this, uh, that we were, again, as a, as a group, as a collective, we were all saying, no, I really feel like it's time to shake things up in my life as well. Now, here's the funny thing, the, the funny next story or, or the funny yeah, story that a friend told in relation to this, you know, let's shake things up. Let's, you know, um, not just, well, for me, I was in that moment, I had this epiphany of, yeah, you know what? Um, actually, I'm not going to share that with you yet. Hold on, because I'm going to give it away. So my friend says, you know, I, um, I recently had my niece with me and she stayed with us for a month. Instead of just on Saturday, she came to stay with us for a month. And when I gave her back to her mom, um, I was just so ready to go and, and do my thing, right? Again, she's, she's not a mom herself, but she is a nurturer. She takes care of her beautiful niece a lot. Um, and so she said, I just, you know, I, I think she said I went to the movies, you know, like in the middle of the day and then I got in my car one night and her husband was working late. So she, but even if her husband was, wasn't working late, she would have done this because I, I know her style. But she said, I got in my car and just drove. I just drove and drove and drove with no 
particular destination with no thought as to what I was going to do. I just wanted to drive and feel free and feel freedom and feel sort of that call of my soul. Like, where am I going to end up? Right. And I'm, as I'm listening to her, um, you know, I'm like getting so excited for her and also just like this is giving me such ideas, which I wanted to share, you know, here. And she says, um, and I ended up turning on Tina Turner and I, I drove and drove and drove for so long. I forget how long she said that she drove and that she ended up um, driving herself in a, into a, basically into a dead end, uh, into a dead end in someone's driveway. And they were like, what the heck is this person doing here? As she's blasting Tina Turner. Now, as I'm hearing this story, I'm just like, I'm, I'm so excited to be hearing it because here's the epiphany that came to me and that I hope lands in you in the way that it's meant to. In other words, that it really does um, support your kind of an elevation of your own awareness um, to, uh, to not just raise your kids or, um, but to really raise the, the amount of time, to raise the level of focus that you have on yourself in, in a specific way though. Because we hear this being talked about a lot and I don't mean just like, oh, take time for yourself, do self-care. I'm saying that, but I'm saying something more specific. I'm saying, you know, raising the amount of time that we are able to do for ourselves in the most random of ways. In other words, you know, I had an, the, uh, the epiphany that evening that, you know, here I have a 13 year old who's over here playing soccer or practicing soccer that for 13 years, and I said this out loud at the dinner party, I said, you know, what's so crazy. I just realized that for 13 years, though, I take a lot of time to travel on my own, to travel with, or not on my own, um, to travel with friends, uh, to go out with girlfriends. I have ladies at the house, not just for client evenings or days, but just girlfriends, you know, at the house that are my, my, my girlfriends. Um, that, that even though I do those things, that anytime I'm in Los Angeles, if I am local, in other words, if I am here in Los Angeles, the, the, the big epiphany I had as a mom, and maybe you, you, have, you have done this, maybe you're doing this. I realized that if I'm an event, at an event in Los Angeles, or if I'm you know, at a girlfriend gathering that starts at five, let's say, um, I am always, almost always, very conscious and very aware of coming back to Nolan, meaning coming back to, um, to say goodnight to him. And that sounds lovely and it is, you know, I, the, I, I have pride, you know, have been very proud of, or not proud, I have, I have um, prioritized this in my life. I have always wanted to go or be home for Nolan. But I said that night, you know what, you guys, I, if I've been at an event, if I've been out with girlfriends, I'm like running home because my home is so good. Meaning I love, I love Nolan. I, I love Josh. You know, our house is filled with, with peace and, and joy. And I just love being with them so much that I find that I'm constantly like running back to them. Now that may sound really cute and sweet and it is, but here's the, the bigness or the richness of the aha that I had for myself as a woman, for myself as a, as a, as a being, as a human being, for myself as a soul that yes, loves her family and wants to be connected to that family, that I also need the, the, the random nights where maybe I don't, maybe I'm not home to say goodnight to him. Maybe I'm not yeah, home that night. Maybe I'm not home that other night, you know, weeks later. Maybe I'm not home that other night, weeks and weeks later. Maybe I too can take that drive on a school night and, and you know, blast Tina Turner um, without any, meaning like without having a reason, without having a big event as my, as my thing, you know, um, because normally it's, oh, hey, honey, you know, it's, it's next Tuesday night or tomorrow night I'm, I'm going out. And Josh is like, cool, have fun. You know, what, where are you going? And it's normally an event or it's, um, whether it's work related or, or, or personal, um, or, uh, sorry, it's a, an event, whether it's professional, professional re related or personally related, or let's say a girl's night out. But how many of us women who are raising children or who are nurturing children, our nieces, our nephews, our grandbabies, you know, whomever it is. Um, and, and I, and I do hope that, that, um, 
that gents are listening to this too, because I think it's really important for, I mean, gents and other women, you know, if, um, uh, depending on who your partner is, uh, where it's, yeah, it's so important for us as, as these nurturers to know that, you know, in order for us to continue to be the fireplaces of our homes, because that's what you and I are, you know, as typically, typically, um, we as women are the fireplaces of our homes. You know, I, I actually called my late brother that, my late brother Dino, who is just, is, is a love and is a love of my life. Um, I called him the fireplace of our family because he was born 17 years my junior. And so here was this little baby that had brought us all together, who had brought these teenagers living their, you know, awkward lives and my parents and, and whatnot. He had brought us together. But ever since I called him that, I remember thinking mothers are the fireplaces of the home too. And we can continue to be those fireplaces that bring people together, that, you know, that, that bring family together, that always, you know, the, the nurturers that always have the ideas, that always know how to keep the family together. We can be the best fireplaces if we find the kindling. In other words, if we truly take time for ourselves. And I don't mean, you know, probably, you know, not just in the way that you would typically think because listen to the aha I had that for 13 years, even though I've taken trips by myself, lots of trips by myself, and when I say by myself, I mean with girlfriends, trips with girlfriends and lots of nights out with my girlfriends, I have never, as a mother, really never, just said to myself, like my, my girlfriend who does not have a child but who was taking care of a child for a month said, you know, I just got in my car after she was gone and just was able to listen to my own thoughts and, and be by myself. And I blasted Tina Turner and was just driving around LA essentially aimlessly. And that sounded so amazing to me. And so, you know, um, I took so much from that. You know, I think it's, it's always uh, not just humbling, but really exciting for me, especially with the work that I do in personal development and in coaching and consulting other women on their businesses, on their lives, you know, on, on balance, on other things that, I learned, meaning I really had an epiphany. Why don't we, why don't you and I take more time to do things that don't make sense? Meaning, why don't we just blast music and, you know, blast Def Leppard? By the way, I had my, my nephew in town recently and he's a huge rock guy, 13 years old. And I said, I basically created a new playlist because I'd forgotten about rock music. Who am I? Like, I've forgotten about rock. I love Def Leppard. You know, I love ACDC. Who else did I listen to? I basically made him um, make, make me a list of all these rock bands, and then we created a playlist together and did all this fun stuff. So that's all to say we forget. We forget who we are, even though we think we know who we are. <laughs> doesn't matter how much personal development we do. doesn't matter how many tricks, trips we take, um, you know, with our girlfriends. I have rarely ever said you know what, tonight I'm actually, I actually may not be at home to say goodnight to Nolan and that doesn't mean anything. Meaning that just means I want to be, I want to feel free. Meaning I want to go listen to rock music as I'm just driving around LA from 8 to 9 p.m. for absolutely no reason except for the very important reason that my soul needs it, that our soul needs it, that we want to come back alive and again feeling like we have literally put you know put a spark back into our own fireplace because when we do that we can be the best nurturers you know we can be the best nurturers that um, you know that we want to be and one of the last thoughts that I want to share with you is you know quantity versus quality of time and I've always been you know very aware of this truth that I know I know deep down inside and not even deep, so deep down inside. I know, I know intellectually and I know emotionally that Nolan at 13, at 12, at 10, at eight, at six, didn't need me for the quantity as much as he needed me for the quality. And so I'm sharing this with you because it's the continued aha that I had from this dinner party last week that I will be doing more of these things for myself. In fact, uh, Monday I went to a movie. I followed uh, my friend's uh, my ins you know inspiration that I received from her. Um, I went to a movie in the middle of the day. I recommend uh, Three Identical Strangers. 
Have you seen it yet? It's in the it's in the theaters. It was good. It was a thinking movie. It was very good. Uh, I won't. I don't want to give anything away except to say that by the very end of the movie, um, not necessarily so much. Well, yeah, by the very end of the movie, you will definitely be coming home like, wow, that really made me think. Um, but it took me a while. I remember thinking because someone had told me it was an amazing movie, and. Uh, and I, I, I was super into it, I was super engaged, but I remember thinking, huh, like I was like 75% through with the movie and I was like, I wonder when that part's coming, right? Um, and it wasn't until literally maybe 10 minutes before the end where I was like, wow, okay, I get why um, I heard so, you know, so many great things about the movie. So three identical, identical, identical strangers, I recommend. So I did that in the middle of the day. Now, Nolan is home for summer. He's still home. So, mind you, speaking of quality versus quantity of time, at noon, you know, in between my work day and in between his summer day, um, and again, I love being with him as I shared at the beginning of the live stream, and, not a but, and I, it was so interesting to turn to him and say, honey, mama, I told him earlier in the morning, but I was like, okay, honey, I'm, uh, I'm headed to the 1220 movie, and he was like, okay, have fun, and he's old enough now, so he was, he was cool at home. Um, but then the next day, um, he and I also did something, and, and these are the things I, I am sort of in the, in the practice of, so this wasn't too outside my, my comfort loop, but we ended up spontaneously in the morning deciding, let's go to Santa Barbara, the two of us. Let's just go to Santa Barbara for lunch, and we ended up, I almost got into the water with my jean shorts. I didn't bring my, um, my, uh, my bathing suit, but almost got in with my jean shorts. I got pretty far in and then decided, ooh, okay, maybe... You know, we only had one towel with us, so I didn't do that. But, um, and then uh, the rest of the week, I'm going to be doing different sort of, you know, different things just for me that aren't event related, that don't, you know, and, and really allowing myself to not feel like I have to rush back as I always have done in, um, in my motherhood. Um, in my motherhood. And again, nothing, I haven't said this yet, so I do want to say that there is nothing wrong at all with rushing back to your children. I love it, I have loved it, that's why I keep doing it, is because I adore that child and I want to say goodnight to him every night. That feels really important to me. And I am at a phase now, it might be because of his age as well, I don't know, um, but I am at a phase, clearly, after getting this inspiration at the dinner party, I am at a phase, at least right now, um, where I want to not have a reason to gift myself presence for my soul. Presence with a T-S. I don't want to have, need to have a reason to feel present for myself, to, to feel presence for myself. And by the way, what a huge... Um, what a huge gift music is for us in that. Maybe that's another reminder for all of us is how can we bring music, the music that we used to love when we were 16. I just found my diary. My mother-in-law, in fact, found my diary recently. Hilarious. Diary from seventh grade. Dear diary, so-and-so is making my life so hard. She thinks she's so important, but she's just a human being. This is me at the end of seventh grade, which is essentially my son's, <laughs> my son's age, just cracked me up. But it took me back to, you know, the, the, um, the, the, the music, you know, the music that I loved when I was in seventh grade. And then of course, having my 13 year old um, nephew, you know, being reminded of, of all the rock uh, bands that I freaking loved and that I do not have on my playlist or I didn't have on my playlist, now I do. So, um, so maybe the idea today is as simple as, can you get in your car? Can you get in your car when you normally wouldn't, just like my friend did? Can you get in your car for an hour and just drive without a plan, without having to meet a girlfriend, without going to a business event, without making it like justified, if you will? Can you blast music, you know? You know, if you like Tina Turner, I definitely got some of her songs now that I, you know, was reminded of her. Um, is it rock music? What kind of music will help you feel like alive? Um, and again, this is not to say that our families don't help us or don't um, sort of inspire an aliveness because 
my husband and my son absolutely do that. And so that's like really the important thing too, is that, you know, even if you are happy, you know, this is not, I'm not just talking about if you are in a rut, if you are in a in a routine and you're not feeling great and go out and, you know, and, you know, uh, get lost, you know, in your city. No, no, no. Like the message here is, is to say that for those of us, mothers, fathers, parents, grandmothers, you know, uh, whomever we are, wh you know, whoever we are that, that um, who are nurturing children, um, even if you are happy, like I think to myself, Michelle, just, you know, yes, you are happy being a mom um, and many other things. But like, um, again, this message is, is, is about motherhood and, or parent, parenthood. Yes, you are happy being a parent and you love saying goodnight to Nolan. You love being there, you know, before he goes to bed and you love, you know, being Josh's partner. And therefore, that's why in the past for 13 years, if you are in L.A., again, I do do a lot of traveling, but um, but if you are in L.A., you know, you like I would rush back. You know, you were always rushing back, you know, even though I am happy to do that. Can I allow myself and can I shake things up and allow myself to not have a reason to be 13 again myself, a 13 year old who can drive. <laughs> um, so let's say 16 year olds, 16 uh, years old. Can we do that for ourselves? And, um, you know, again, even though we are happy, because I think we hear these messages a lot, um, but they are, you know, sometimes they're really geared towards, hey, if you're in a rut, go and do this, right? But let's not be in a, you know, a lot of us are not in a rut. We don't feel unhappy with our lives. We might be a little bit tired or we might be like, you know, whatever it is, you know, juggling, we're multitaskers, you know, I'll raise my hand quite high uh, on that one. Um, you know, mama, business owner, you know, social chair of my, of my family, of my household, lots of different things. Um, but I think we normally, yeah, hear and talk about this or have this conversation when we're in a rut or in a routine. And I'm here to say that we can all be really happy in our relationships and in our parenthood. And yet, and yet, can we shake things up? as if. Can we shake things up as if we were in a rut? Um, so allow maybe just like, you know, my friend, um, my, you know, my friend's story about her getting in her car and driving and driving and driving in Los Angeles for no apparent reason. Um, and she had no idea where she was going and ended up, you know, and ending up in, um, in someone's driveway listening to Tina Turner. You know, what is your version of that? And how can you, you know, not just uh, not l let me take that back. Let me take that word back. And how can we, how can we as a community, how can we, how can you and I as women continue to, um, to raise our kids, but also uh, continue to raise the awareness that we have of ourselves, fe really feeling soulfully free, really feeling that we, as, as well as our relationships, and my husband just got here, as well as our partners, are allowing each other and allowing ourselves because I did say to Josh hey listen with this epiphany for myself let's make sure that you too are doing like random cool fun things that where the only purpose is the biggest purpose of like making your soul feel like you're 16 again you know um, and um, and so so yes how can we raise kids and how can we raise the awareness of ourselves and in other words, how can we raise the awareness of, of, of how we are nurturing and, and filling our souls up in these ways? Um, and that we do not need a reason. We do not need a reason except for to say, I really want to just listen to music and I want to just drive and I want to think and I want to whatever, right? Fill in the blank. Um, and, uh, and yeah, and just that's enough, you know, that is enough. Um, and I did, uh, there was, as I was thinking about all of this and, and coming on to, to share this with all of you, um, I looked over to my, um, anyway, to the side of my, my dinner table and there was this, which I want to show you. There should be a course in the first grade on love, right? That's by um, Andy Warhol. There should be a course in the first grade on love. And I saw that as I was thinking about these stories that I was going to share with you and I thought, there should be a course 
in the first trimester of of pregnancy or the first you know four months of a baby's life on permission in other words on permission to to not just do self-care in the way that we normally think about it but to truly allow ourselves to remember that it's the quality time that our children will be better for it's not the quantity and that um, that our souls being almost like triggered being sparked being excited by not having an agenda you know what I mean like not having a reason to do something for ourselves is the very thing is the very kindling as I was saying earlier is the very kindling that you and I can use to be even better fireplaces for our children for our villages children you know even better nurturers for um, for our families and so um, so that is the message today and with that uh, message meaning with that share the share that I wanted to come on and and and, and ex- you know experience with you or, or to give to you um, and to remind myself of is I had the aha that this um, this event I have an event coming up at the end of um, September but there's a new event um, a new experience that I am um, going to be hosting and I had uh, you know it was very clear in my mind that um, oh my gosh Josh is just is um, shielding me which is great thank you honey hi by the way um, I'm almost done and I had the epiphany that there's this and I don't want to give too much away but there's this experience that I was going to create for um, for professional women in other words for the sort of traditional um, you know entrepreneur driven entrepreneur creative entrepreneur that I normally work with and today as I was sitting down you know jotting some notes and 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 working but then also thinking about this live stream that I wanted to come on and, and share I thought no the experience that I want to create is actually going to be for women raising children and it is going to be all about adventure It is going to be two days worth and I'm the only the last thing that I'm going to share is that it is going to be um, broken out, broken up into various parts. It is going to be um, uh, focused on the spiritual, on our physical bodies. So on the spiritual body, on the physical body, and our, on our professional or creative body. Now that's all I will say. Um, but my goodness, I mean, if if the last years have taught me anything um, about uh, being the spark in your own life. You know, my, as, as most of you know, um, my brother Dino and my mom passed away two years apart from one another, both, uh, both unexpectedly and tragically. And I can say without doubt that the thing that I am constantly reminded of is that, is that you and I, is that we are the spark in our own lives. Our husbands can't do it as much as Josh is shielding me from the sun right now. He cannot be my happiness he cannot fix he cannot tinker so much he cannot you know he cannot make me happy you know it's not Nolan's job either it's my job it's my job and uh, you know that's the first thing and then the second thing just really realizing because in my in my practice you know in my in my consulting and and coaching practice um, I have really increased the amount of experiences that I have produced Um, and it has been for both parties in other words it has been for the women who are my clients and it has also been very much for me right because that's the best of that is the best of both worlds you know we create in our businesses and we create creatively um, for both parties and hopefully equally speaking and and so that's why you know um, I just am continuing to create experiences that are truly unique and that are um, that, that spark not just thought but that are really sparking transformation and that are moving women you know when I think of the creative heroin experience or the seven greater good parties or the high touch experience that I had at my home um, the next experience which is called the ecstatic experience immersion day at my home at the end of September and then this new one for moms so definitely if you're if you're a, a woman raising kids if you're a woman raising con- you know consciousness um, and if you're a woman uh, continuing to want to raise, you know, raise or increase the amount of adventure that you feel in your life, definitely pay attention. In other words, like keep posted to my page if you're not currently on my newsletter list. 
um, you can uh, hop on there at www.michellegelati.com, M-I-C-H-E-L-L-E-G-H-I, what's my spelling? L-O-T-T-I.com. I just saw someone that I went to college with. I think I went to college with that guy. Um, so you can join me there. You can find out more there. I will be sharing more here, but I just wanted to, um, you know, I, I had up to the minute reporting, right? So I'm home and I'm like, oh, another epiphany. I'm not going to wait to do this for just professional women. I'm going to do this for women raising kids. And it's going to be out of this world. It's going to be in Los Angeles, more than likely end of October or um, sometime middle of November. So if you, if you want to know the information now, you can direct message me and I will give that to you um, because I, uh, yeah, I'll probably at some point pre-register people because there won't be a ton of space, but there will be enough space for uh, those who um, are really meant to be there. So with that, let us all, um, both women and men and the village, let us raise, um, let us not just raise kids, let us love up on our kids, let us do that in quality time. And um, here's to Tina Turner and rocking out in the, uh, in the car for no reason at all. Enjoy your life, bye-bye.